This is comfort food to a T right here. Hey, this is Chef Ben, and we are going to make an open-faced mac and cheese sandwich with smoked brisket. And yes, it tastes as good as it sounds. So what we have here is I've got a brisket flat. Um, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna rub it down with a coffee rub. One thing I do want you to know is that if you do not have a smoker at your house, or you don't have someone that has a smoker that can smoke this for you, you can go to your local uh, barbecue shack, one of your favorite, order a pound for yourself for dinner and get a little bit extra for, for tomorrow. And this is what we're gonna do for tomorrow with the leftover. But if not, if you do have a smoker and uh, whatnot, this is, uh, we're gonna go ahead and season this uh, brisket up. What I like to use here, this is a flat of the brisket. Normally a brisket, a full brisket is about this big. And you have two parts, you have a flat and you have the point. The point's normally what you take for chopped brisket, and the flat's what we use for sliced brisket. And if you can't tell the difference, you can see here on the flat has these lines of the meat going this way, and that's where you can tell that that's the flat where we're gonna slice it against the grain, okay? I don't like to trim the fat off my brisket. Some people do. Uh, there's some championship barbecuers that would argue with me, but I really think this cap on top is a key component to this dish. Um, we're gonna start out with a little bit of coffee. You can use any kind of coffee you want to. Um, we just got ground coffee, and I'm gonna put about, oh, for this brisket, maybe about a cup in, okay? And then I've got, uh, you can use any kind of rub. You can make your own rub. Uh, if you have your own rub, you just add the coffee, ground coffee to your rub. Um, here we're using a store-bought rub, and we're just gonna pour that in. Uh, gives it a really unique flavor. If you can get ancho chili powder, I would recommend that. And then we're just gonna throw a little celery salt on there as well. I think it kind of adds to the uh, flavor. All right, so we got that. I'm gonna take my whisk. I like to whisk my rubs. Well, if you get in a whisk, you can really whisk this rub together so it's completely incorporated. So we're gonna take the rub here. I'm gonna rub it right on top of the brisket, right there on the fat. And personally, I like a lot of it on there. We'll flip it over and we'll season this side again. And I take my glove and I just, why it's called a rub, rub that bad boy right in there. Okay, and then all of this excess that's here, my fat's gonna go on it and I'm gonna push it down onto that, onto the fat. So then you can look and you're covering the fat, okay? So take a little bit more, place it on this bad boy. Couple things, if you want it and you have the time, you could do this the day before. Let it sit in your refrigerator overnight and it's really gonna absorb the flavor of the coffee rub, okay? So I'm gonna take this, put it onto my sheet pan and then I'm gonna run outside into the backyard, throw it into my smoker and I'll be right back. All right, so while our coffee rub brisket is in the smoker, we are going to go ahead and move on to making the cheese sauce for the mac and cheese. So the first thing to start off with is we're going to make a roux. A roux is a thickening agent and is one of the most important parts of this recipe because we're not only using butter, which a roux is equal parts fat to equal parts of flour. And then you wanna cook it. A mistake that most home cooks in America do is they don't cook the roux enough and then you get this flour flavor into your sauce. So it's important to make sure you cook it to where the flour and the roux change a color. So we're gonna take a little bit of bacon fat, okay? Cause I love bacon fat. You can call it bacon juice cause it's just as juicy. So we got that in there. And the next thing is I'm gonna put some butter as well because as you can see, there's a nice little smoke point, okay? All right, so we got that in there. I'm gonna incorporate the butter and the bacon fat together and stirring. I'm gonna take my flour. Me personally, when I make my roux, I add a little flour at a time, little flour at a time, little flour at a time, because it might not be precise. Add just a little bit more. The roux's ready. I'm almost, I'm right there. I'm, I'm right past a pale, almost to a blonde roux. And that's when it's go time here with the chicken stock, okay? So we're going to add our chicken stock now. And then I'm gonna bring it to a boil. So it's one thing you should know is we don't want this super thick because we will use some of this cheese in thickening. 
So as this roux is cooking, I'm going to come over here and talk about a little of the cheeses that we have to add to it. Uh, the first one I have here is a nice uh, soft cheese. It's got roasted garlic and herbs. It's a Borson cheese. And then the next one we have is a good smoked Gouda. And then we have a sharp cheddar. And then we have what's surprising, not the secret ingredient, is America's favorite pasteurized cheese. Okay. So we're going to bring this to a boil. The next pro I'm going to do is we are going to um, puree some roasted red pepper, some roasted garlic, some caramelized onion together, and this is going to go into the sauce. Okay, so I've got my caramelized onion, I've got my roasted garlic, okay, and I've got my roasted red peppers. So since I have this large blender with just a little bit in there, I'm gonna take the beer that we're adding, some of the beer that we're adding to this and putting it in here, okay? So put that down. Mmm, man, taste the smell of garlic, the sweetness of the caramelized onions. Oh, amazing. And then we're just gonna add this straight into the, into the velouté, okay? And then we're gonna come in and then whisk this in. And at the same time, I'm gonna add the rest of this beer. We're gonna let this come to almost near a simmer, and then I'm gonna start adding cheese. I'm gonna start with my smoked Gouda, and I'm just gonna put it in there. And then we're gonna give it a little stir. And then we're gonna go in here with the sharp cheddar. So as this cheese is melting, we're gonna go ahead and add this cheese. So your sauce went from looking like this brown sauce to now your cheese is gonna melt in there and look like a real nice dark cheese sauce. Okay, so right here, once this has all been incorporated, we're gonna take this Borson cheese and we're going to add it, okay? So I'm just gonna add it right to the cheese sauce and I'm gonna use my whisk to break it up and then stir it in with my sauce, okay? This is gonna help give a little cream, even more creaminess. This nice little herb roasted garlic flavor to already go with the flavors we have in there. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna add a couple splashes of some uh, hot sauce. You want something with uh, that vinegar, lots of vinegar and acid to go into the sauce, okay? You're not trying to make it hot, you're trying to help balance the sauce. And then we're just gonna put a little splash of, I'm gonna go with the old uh, cap trick and call it good. There we go. Stir that in, you're gonna add some salt. Not too much because cheese is super salty. And on top of that, we already added the bacon fat and chicken stock, okay? Then we're gonna add a little pepper. There, stir it in. And voila, our sauce for our mac and cheese is done. Okay, so we have taken the brisket out of the smoker. I have smoked this over pecan wood and hickory. It is amazing just the smell. You can get the tones of that chili powder we added. You can smell the coffee. I am so ecstatic about cutting into this, okay? You can also see here the little bit of jiggle here of that fat that we left on, right? And this is what's gonna be good right into our sandwich, okay? So brisket, I'm gonna take the first slice. Looking at it, remember I told you that there's the lines that are going across? So we've got the lines going this way. So it means that I need to cut it this way to be against the grain, okay? So we'll take our first slice here, and it's like butter. Look at that, look how tender that is. It makes nice, thin slices. So, the next step is, we're going to mix our sauce with the macaroni. I'm gonna take my mixing bowl here, okay? I'm gonna add my macaroni that we've cooked, boiling water with salt. Okay, I'm gonna throw that bad boy right on in there. Then I'm gonna take this cheese sauce, I'm gonna pour on the top of the macaroni with my spoon here, mixing this up. Okay, so we've got our macaroni and cheese. I've got our awesome smoked brisket. What we wanna do is I've got my plate here, okay? And I'm going to just do something just as simple and easy as taking a piece of white Texas toast and placing it here. You can toast it if you want to. We're not going to, we want it to be kind of soggy with it. Huh? And I'm gonna take a nice 
helping of my mac and cheese right over the top, like so. All right, and then we're gonna take and place this brisket right on top of that mac and cheese, like so. A little bit of barbecue sauce, maybe right on top, just to give it a little pop. And then we're gonna hit it up, a little bit of green onion, cut on extreme bias. This right here, like I said at the beginning, it tastes just as good as it sounds. This is comfort food to a T right here.